Tyler Scandrett will handle the kick, and we are underway. MEAC play on a Saturday evening in South Carolina. And it'll be at the 30-yard line where North Carolina A&T will set up their opening drive. Again, Chris Garden, one of the top return men in the country, let alone in this conference. Well, North Carolina A&T a year ago, Tariq Cohen was the man, the bell cow at running back. They've got a little two-headed monster this year behind a video game type quarterback. They've got a variety of ways they can hurt you. Well, they can, but it's still Cartwright. It, he's the guy for me, though, that makes a lot of things happen. He's again, 71 attempts, 421 yards on the year. He is out of the pistol behind the quarterback, Lamar Raynard. First team all-conference on the preseason team this year. Raynard's 71% of his passes being completed, and they'll have to wait to take the first down snap as we do have whistles blowing the play dead before it even gets started. And encroachment will make it a first and 10 from the 25-yard line. So you imagine this opens the whole playbook for you it if you're does. the Aggies. First and five. Raynard able to get it to Cartwright quickly. I don't know if there's miscommunication on which side he would be on, but a strong run for Cartwright. Again, only needed five, easily the first down. You can see he just keeps those legs churning. He hits six, seven yards after contact here where he gets in, gets into the second level, and then right here just keeps churning those legs, comes up with six or seven more. They did not have to go far to find him in High Point, North Carolina, a former state champion in state, the now fourth-year junior at tailback. Well, I mentioned they have a couple of good ones. Jamari Smith is now your man in the backfield with Raynard. Empty backfield. Rainer directs traffic, and he is able to hit his man, Trey Scott. First connection to the number two tight end, already a graduate at North Carolina A&T, former member of the Tulane Green Wave. He had really no pressure. He just moved outside the pocket to buy some time, found a receiver, comes back to the football, gets the first down. So a gain of about six on what was first and ten then. So now it sets up the second and four after they only needed five that first play to begin the drive. Got to get some pressure up front. Flirting with midfield. Temple handoff and the first touch about a yard gain for Jamari Smith. Nice job by the men up front for the Bulldogs. They were ready. Now that defensive front, for me, is the key to this game for the Bulldogs. They have to take care of business. There are two or three of them that have really not performed up to the level that they would like to, but they can create some real pressure with that front four. Tyrell Goodwin, the 285-pound sophomore D-tackle, was able to redirect the back into Deshaun Taylor's tackle. And they are back to Cartwright, and that's back-to-back -back carries for a yard or less for the Aggies. A really nice job of just taking away the point of attack that time. And when, when you do that, it puts you in a third and long situation as New Newell does a nice job of getting to the play. This is going to put him in a punting situation. So they come up short on third down. Raekwon DeBose is back. Ooh, offsides. That's going to give a first down. That right will there. extend the drive for the Aggies. Oh. No. They wow. say movement on the line first against the Aggies. It's drawn offsides. You see that little bit of movement right at the top of your screen. But that's a break. You can tell this game already. He's got the flow of excitement. You've got to settle in a little bit. Coaches worry about the beginning of a ball game. First part of the half in the first half and the second half. DuBose able to field it out to 21. Eludes the initial arm tackles. DuBose with some space at midfield. Looking for some blockers ahead. Flags come flying in and the ball is loose. So much to unfold here. But at the moment, the headline may be that the Aggies get the football back. Long discussion here. It was a promising return for DuBose. 
We'll have some flags to sort out and possession. Here comes the call. Yeah, they'll decline the penalty and accept possession, and the Aggies are now in Bulldog territory. Well, it gets right around midfield as he's going down, right there as he's coming down. That football comes out. And it's going to back up right there. It could have been a face mask on the play as well. And when the Bulldogs' defense had finally made a stop, special teams gives it right back to this potent offense for the Aggies. It is an offense that is scoring... A modest clip of 46 points a ball game. Yeah, they, they have been really good, and they, they've been very balanced. 211 on the ground. But their last three carries have been stymied by the front seven of the Bulldogs. Yeah, they, that's what they, their strength of this Bulldog football team is no doubt is this front seven. They really got to step up tonight. Try to make, even make any team one-dimensional, you're in much better shape. Right now, they're trying to make this a one-dimensional game. The fewest points the Aggies have scored this year, 35 points, and that was in a victory against FBS member Charlotte of Conference USA. Raynard again out of the shotgun. At midfield. Some blocks in place. About a seven-yard gain before Cartwright is brought down. Well, he's so quick to the hole. He just darts in there, finds that soft spot. Lennard does his job right here. You can see big linebacker stepping in there and make the tackle. Preseason All-America. And one of the best, not just in FCS, but potentially in the draft. Yes. So they'll say they need a long three. Here on second down. Two deep zone. Raynard, good protection. Will roll to his left. Almost had his man for the first down. Uh, it'll wind up incomplete. Nice coverage there you see from Michael Moody, the fifth-year senior. Well, they did a nice job. They only rushed three that time. They dropped eight in coverage in zone. Took away all the throwing lanes at that time. He finally tried to buy some time to the outside. Second punt. And I'll, the hat. I'll correct myself, that last play was third down. Now it is time to punt again for the Aggies. This is their best play. But they can they do a good job on the return. They just gotta hold on to the football. So the Aggies do not benefit from the turnover. DeBose will get out of the way. This will take an Aggie friendly hop, and they are able to save it at the one yard line. What an outstanding kick coverage right there. Getting in position. Did a nice job of finding the end zone, knowing where you're going to be. Get get right on the end line, and then make sure you secure it. Don't carry your momentum across the end line. Down it at the one. The nice job by special teams when it's all said and done for the Aggies. And it will have this young offense for the Bulldogs pinned back, they say, at the two-yard line. And they do mark them back at the two. Boy, this takes away... Lincoln, the, the things that you can do and you may want to do, if you scripted the first 10 or 15 plays, you don't plan on taking it over the first time at your own two-yard line. So it might change your script. How about this for a college football atmosphere? Orangeburg, South Carolina, and that is your visiting band. Oh, beautiful evening tonight, too. 80 degrees. Yeah, the sun continues to set here on this Saturday evening. And... The Aggies defense will come out for the first time. Bulldogs offense never got to touch the ball the last go around because the turnover on special teams. Juan Ford is your junior quarterback, the third year sophomore out of Atlanta. Bray Samuel, his tailback on his left hip. Quarterback keeps it. They fool the defense, and this will help the Bulldogs get away from their goal line about a nine-yard gain, uh, pardon me, about a seven-yard gain. And Ford does a nice job. Zone read right here, reads it, sees that defensive end crashing down, pulls it out out of the mesh, gets to the outside, and gets some breathing room. 
Yeah, if you don't make the right read, all of a sudden two points on the board for A and T. A little bit favor more favorable field position here. Second and three. Able to thread the needle, first down up to about the 19-yard line as he finds Demontrez Burrow. He just got it through a very short window right there to get the first down, but he did not have a big space here to complete this pass as he gets rid of it. Run, run pass option, where he finds that little bit of window and gets it in there. Now some breathing room and a first down. Balls at the 18-yard line. So first and 10 from the 18. Quick release in and out of the arms of Flag will come into play. The intended receiver was Trey Churn out of Columbia, South Carolina. Trying to go on a quick snap that time as they get to the line of scrimmage. Here comes the call. That'll be a personal foul. A dangerous block. Two guys engaged, one high, one low. Somebody goes down. A lot of times that happens. If you even if you slip, Lincoln as an offensive lineman and get down low, and he's engaged with a an opponent, it's going to be a chop block and half the distance. First down. Yeah, that takes them to about the nine yard line. Ford rolls to his right with an option, makes the pitch, and they will get about half of the penalty yardage back on Samuel's run towards the sideline. Uh, nice job of feathering that just all the way to the sideline. You want to try to get the quarterback to commit. He does commit, pitches it to the outside. Look at all of those white jerseys coming that direction. Nice job of keep feathering. You know, the sidelines never missed a tackle. No, that is your 12th man. Juan Caldwell will point out did have a good block for the Bulldogs out there on the edges. You always appreciate when your receivers are willing to help lock in those blocks for you. Two running backs in the backfield join Ford, the mobile quarterback to say the least. They'll go straight ahead. Nothing doing into a pair of Aggies. Among them, Daryl Johnson as he combines on the tackle with Deion Jones, the fourth year junior from Belmont, North Carolina. Well, again, the Bulldogs started this drive on their own two-yard line, made their way up to the 18 before the personal foul called on the chop block. Now protect the football right here. No turnovers. If it's not there, maybe check it down early. That way you can punt it away and play defense. No mistake here. Third and long. Up to the original line of scrimmage. And then, pardon me, no, that is a first down. Getting my markers mixed up. Right. He did a nice job breaking to the outside. He is short of the first of the line to gain right here. But he turns, does a nice job spinning out of this, keeping his feet. And then he does an extra 4-5 afterward after breaking that tackle gets the first down. Remain Baxley able to fight for the extra yardage and keep this drive moving for the Bulldogs. On first and ten, just unable to get out of the ankle tackle on the carry. Nice job by the Aggies of ultimately not letting go. As for the Bulldogs, that was LeBron Morris, the sophomore with the touch. We're going to see several guys get to touch the rock tonight for the Bulldogs. Darden does a nice job, the senior rover, to come up and make that open field tackle. It, it is difficult in space to get a running back on the ground. An injury right here. One of those guys up front. Yeah, Kendrick Hare will limp off your starting right guard, the 300-pound sophomore out of Orlando. And depth is a huge problem yeah. for the Bulldogs in that offensive front. They can be the difference between finishing strong in the conference or seeing it unravel. Four wide again, the quarterback to Juan Ford these days, the sophomore at quarterback. We'll keep it. Eludes the pressure in the backfield. It's all Ford now, just trying to follow some blocks. 
Now getting close to midfield across the 45 up to about the 47. And I really like the fact what Ford does. Ford. He gets gets into space, and then when he gets traffic, he gets down. He understands, I got to take it's care of myself. Field. I'm going to run the ball tonight 15 to 18 to 20 times. If I don't have to take an extra hit, why should I take an extra hit? Get as much as you can get. Get down, protect your body, get the first down. Also showed some patience to allow some holes to develop. Bulldogs looking to take the opening advantage here on their first drive. That began back on the two-yard line. We'll bring it up to the 46 on another carry from Ford. It's a young man, only one interception, but no touchdowns thrown this year. This is his game. Yeah, he, he protects the football. Uh, he's done a nice job in the throwing game now. And I like, again, he gets down, right at contact, protect his body. Does, understands that... Get as much as you can get. There are times in the fourth quarter, maybe you've got to get that extra yard, but right now, you don't. It was the rover, Jamal Darden, who was able to touch him down. Midway through here in this opening quarter of MEAC play on Flow Football. Glad to have you with us. Orangeburg, South Carolina, home of South Carolina State. These two programs so familiar with one another. They're coaches both yep. from their respective regions. Certainly no strangers either. Buddy Pugh, done an outstanding job in his career. You know, he's 12 victories short, becoming the all-time leading, winning. Yeah, Buddy Pugh with a degree from South Carolina State in his 16th year coaching at his alma mater. And now his quarterback, Ford. Quick release along the line of scrimmage, looking for yardage after the catch. Now just protecting that football as... Finishing the tackle, Jeremy Taylor, the free safety to clean it up. Now the Aggies coming with a max blitz that time. and It's a good play call when you have the bubble screen called against the blitz. Nice job of coming back to the football. Defensive lineman, if you can't get there, you got to feel that bubble screen. And when you do, you got to turn and cut it back to the outside. You do a nice job there, brings up a third and long. Again, you see the shadows Actually, cast gonna have to punt it away here. from our press box here at Dawson Stadium. And it looks like the Aggies have, in fact, held the punter, Cliff Benjamin, the sophomore, back from his own 31. And gets a boot behind this. Fair catch called at the 22. So when you talk about field position, a win there for the Bulldogs, pinned back to their own two. Now it's the Aggies at their own 22 to start their third drive. Wow, well, it, it's really important. That's like a, a, almost a turnover. It, it changes field position because you've got from one end of the field to the other. Instead of having a punt out of your own end zone, at least you change the field. And coaches told me years ago, if I've got 80 yards to defend, I'll, they've got a 20% yeah. chance of scoring. If I've got 20 yards to defend, they got an 80% <laughs> chance of scoring. Give or take 3%. That's exactly right. So, Bull, Bull Reese, old defensive coordinator for a long time across the country, says, just give me some field to defend. There are your Aggies, their head coach for a seventh straight year. Again, Rod Broadway, offensive coordinator Chip Hester. Mentioned they're averaging 46 points a ball game. They have outscored their opponents this year 124 to 10 in the first half. Now, they've been outstanding. And the other person, Elijah Bell, folks, here. Watch him tonight, too. Number 13. He's a wide receiver. At this point, he's got 18 receptions for 285 yards, averaging nearly 16 yards per catch. And seven, count them, seven TDs in this short season already. These schools have such a close bond with their communities, recruiting so much local talent in North Carolina and South Carolina. They may square off on the high school field on Fridays and then next thing you know in the MEAC on Saturdays. So 4.05 to go in the opening quarter. Third possession for the Aggies. Raynard. And again, if you want to do the math, he's a 71% passer. You assume that ball was going to be caught as Elijah Bell, your man, hauls it in. Yeah, you're going to have to get the football to him. 6'1", 225 pounds. Watch him do a great job of shielding the defender with his body. Go up with his hands, does Bell. Comes down with the first down. Got to get the ball in this. You got to target this guy. And he, he puts points on the board. He's brought down by Alex Brown, the corner. So from the 34-yard line now, 
So pump fake with the shoulders. Pressure. He takes the hit. Airs it out. Incomplete. Looking for the big play downfield for Malik Wilson. But nothing doing. Great coverage, including from Jason Baxter, the free safety. Well, you're going to take a blow, and that's... Bernard takes a blow. He stands in there. Nice job of knocking the ball away. But as a quarterback, it's hard to stand in there knowing you're just fixing to get blown up. He did it. Baxter gets that right paw on the football, yep. helping to break it up. Good running down here. Second and long, second and ten. An opportunity maybe a little draw. An extra man to block in the backfield. Along with the tight end. Raynard looking for a hole. Takes what he can get straight ahead for a gain of about three and a half. Yeah, quarterback draw that time. It's a, it's a draw situation. Pretty good job up by the defensive front. See him set his feet. You know, sometimes quarterbacks get impatient on a quarterback draw. You don't allow the defensive rush to come in a little bit. Might have went forward just a little early that time. Raynard this year, one rushing touchdown, but really the numbers, 12 touchdowns, no interceptions, passing. A 1,000 yards already this season for the fourth-year junior. He was, he was putting these numbers up last year before he got hurt. Protection holds up. One broken tackle, cross midfield for the first time. The Aggies has Elijah Bell with his second grab here in the opening quarter. Uh, it's just difficult to come down. Really nice recognition. you got to recognize this is a wide receiver, too. The Bulldogs are coming with the blitz. Bell breaks to the outside. Again, 6'1", 220. Tough for those corners to bring him down. Another first down for a and They're 1-0 in the MEAC. 4-0 overall on the year. That win against Morgan State convincing last weekend, 49-17. Quick release down the middle. And this offense can speed things up in a hurry. That time the dart hauled in by Chris Garden. A little RPO right there, run pass option. You can see the fake inside stays right in this spot, no drop. It pulls the linebackers up, drag, the deep drag across the middle for the first down. Ninth grab on the young season for Garden, who's as talented as he is in the offense, so valuable on special teams in the return game. Preseason all-conference in the MEAC this year. Little over a minute still to go in the opening quarter. And dragging the big bulldog on him as, again, Shaquille Crouch taken by Cartwright and that's no easy task for an extra four yards Cartwright he just does an outstanding job of keep moving his feet we talked about it already that's the impressive part he's quick but he is difficult to bring down after contact I think we all get three credit hours for physics after watching that a running back somehow able to move the boulder on second and three not as fortunate this time as he ran right into Cordell Brown. Uh, doing a nice job on the outside. It, you know, when you get the inside sweep to the outside, you've got to get penetration. And you'll see the penetration here forces Cartwright to make a move back to the outside. Just a really nice job of, of overall team defense right there. It's going to bring out a big third down here. Sean Taylor made that play. His linebacker position getting to the outside and turning that back in. It'll be third and four. They say a loss of a yard on the last play. And first we have whistles. That will do it for the end of the opening quarter. Again, Markel Cartwright already some highlights early on. And he is a young man that could potentially take the Aggies to another MEAC title. on their third drive marching into Bulldog territory at the 25 here. Man coverage. Rainer down the middle. 
And again, he's got receivers he can count on, including Garden, who was not convinced that he was down, but they do blow the play dead. Bulldogs have stayed in zone most of the time. They go to man, bring the blitz that time. And a forearm is as good as a knee for being down. First and 10 from the 16 here for the Aggies. Aggies looking to punch it in for the first time today. It's guys in the box. They have got them spread out. Great protection. Rainer over the middle and perhaps recognize that there's pressure coming and with the coverage, just throw it away. We talked about South Carolina State staying a lot of zone early in the ball game, but most of the time teams switch to man once you get down in the red zone right there. They stayed in zone. Nice job of just protecting the football and throwing that ball away for Bernard. Now brings out a big second down here. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Bulldogs come after him here. Started on their own 22. Now at the 17 of South Carolina State. Cartwright looking for some difficult yardage up the middle. Got some big bodies in his favor. And it'll be third and about a modest five. A good penetration up front. Those four guys up in front or three guys with their hands down. But they're four across the front. Do a nice job of making it a third down. It's a big play. If, if you're... South Carolina State right here, you wanted to start out on top, but if you can hold them to a field goal attempt right here, defensively, you've done a nice job. So three receivers will split out. Trey Scott will stay in the backfield along with Cartwright. And they will again dump it down to that H-back. Inside the five, it's a first down. It'll be first and goal, and a late flag will come in after the play. The connection to Trey Scott for now Keeps this drive moving towards the end zone. Oh, this is a well-designed play. You have all the momentum with the motion going to the wide side of the field. They fake the screen to the outside, to the wide side. Pull, tackle out in front. Just slip the tight end back. Get the first down. We're waiting on the penalty. But look, you don't like the personal foul, but the perhaps note there is it's after the play. They get the first down. Yeah, it's going to be first and goal from the 19 because they were down at the four, and it's going to back them up. But excellent play, well-designed play, executed perfectly, and then you just have a, a personal foul penalty to this. So now it'll be first and goal. So you... It, Defensive personnel has to change. You have a little bit different view now because uh, you're protecting 19 yards. First and 10, Aggies. I think it is a first and 10 the way they apply the penalty. At the moment, they do have the first down marker up at the 10. Raynard will roll right and simply throw this football away. So even though they got the first down that would have set up a first and goal, when they... Yeah, but, hmm, that's interesting. Usually that would, would set up the first to go, and it's a dead ball foul from that point. Yeah. Just the pressure right here forces him outside. Had to throw this football away. Nice job. Raynard able to do so as he was out of the pocket. We haven't seen him come after him very often here in this first half. Eh? Good time right here. See if you can uh, get after the quarterback. That may have something to do with his two preseason all-conference linemen in front of him. Cartwright stays back to block. Raynard eyeing one in the end zone. Just overthrows Capel. A double move. A post corner route. He was open. That's one that Raynard would love to have back. He had plenty of time from the inside. Sells it to the inside and back to the outside. And, I mean, he breaks wide open. Busted coverage. Couldn't take advantage. Everything was playing out in favor of the Aggies there. 
They're just overthrowing Jaquil Capel, the graduate student, the transfer from Appalachian State. Would have been his second score of the year through the air. Has a couple of rushing touchdowns. Again, the backs are Cartwright and Smith on either side of your quarterback, Lamar Rainer. They're coming. Full house. And there was an open field ahead of Raynard if he could have broken one ankle tackle. But it was Deshaun Taylor coming in to save the day. And Taylor, second leading tackler on this ball club, does a nice job. They were bringing Taylor and Lenard, both inside linebackers on the blitz, bringing five. He recognizes it, puts it down, but a great open field tackle right there is going to force the field goal attempt. Taylor from Lincolnton, Georgia. A great leader of this defense, according to his head coach and Buddy Pugh. Aggies looking to first put the first points up. Noel Ruiz is 0 for 2 this year on field goals. They've scored so many touchdowns. Uh, for the first time this year, three points on the resume of Noel Ruiz. And the Aggies finally on the board after their third offensive possession of the day. Well, you got to... Both sides have got to be very happy what took place. It, if you're the Aggies, you're happy. You drove the ball down, had an opportunity to come away with six, but you got points. On the other side, if you're State, you found a way to limit the damage and didn't give up the end zone. So really, both teams fairly happy as you come back to the sidelines. We'll see some adjustments here. Interesting for me, though, is what do the Bulldogs do at South Carolina State? They have got to get some kind of flow into their offense and get something going offensively. No place we would rather be on this Saturday evening. Again, we talked about the atmosphere. It's not just about the football players who put in the hours. All of the student organizations, including the marching bands, up early, honing their craft and supporting their university. So the Bulldogs looking to pick up their first win in MEAC. They're up against a top 25 foe in the FCS tonight. North Carolina a and a program that Rod Broadway is able to take over and put on the map. Well, there's no no doubt to beat a Conference USA team earlier this season. So this is this is a club that's uh, on a roll right now. And difficult to win games on the road in the MIA. They hired Rod Broadway. He had taken North Carolina Central to a Division II HBCU National Championship. Resurrected Grambling to a HBCU National Championship. Did it with North Carolina a and as well. Broadway, the only coach to lead three different programs to that national title. And this looks like an Aggies team that could give him number four on the resume. That ball dropped but recovered. And the Bulldogs will set up in much better field position than when they were on the two for their last drive. It'll be up, be up around the 23. Uh, good coverage. Mishandle of, of the kickoff allowed the coverage team to get there. So back inside their 25-yard line. Need continuity. Need a big play. We talked about that in the open. Uh, this is a team that needs to have something good happen, get the crowd behind them. Illegal block in the back is being called on the return. So that will take the Bulldogs back closer to the 10. They'll put him at the 13-yard line. Danny Lewis is your offensive coordinator for the Bulldogs under Buddy Pugh. Mentioned Buddy in his 16th year at the helm. He has led this program to six MEAC titles. When you talk about the Bulldogs, they are the Yankees of the MEAC. 14 titles overall for this university. I don't know if they care to be referred to as Yankees, though. <laughs> well, they are 12 and 3 all time in this rivalry. Although the Aggies have gotten the better of the exchange in recent years. Not much room to run after going into the arms of AT's defense for Trey Samuel. Like to get ahead of the chains. That time giving it to Samuel. Juan Ford Jr., though, quarterback, he's the guy that makes him happen. If they have success tonight, it will be on the shoulders of number nine. So again, split backs for Ford. He'll air it out. That ball may have been tipped. If not, just got over the fingertips, and Traquan DeBose is able to keep a read on it and haul it in. His 11th catch on this season. Ford comes to the outside, does get hit, just had enough strength to get it through there. It's definitely tipped. 
That Fortunately, was... down in the hands of the receiver. Sam Blue, the pride of Raleigh, North Carolina, got his hand on that ball. That's not an easy catch to make afterwards. Good focus. Set up third and three, I believe. It's the quarterback draw here. Quick release. Was that ball caught? No. The coverage from Jamal Darden, the rover, got there right when the ball did. And just keeping your eyes, quick slant right over the middle ball, a little bit behind him. Once it was not in his hands, did a nice job of knocking it away. He's going to force the punt. They're looking for Quan Caldwell, who had a great touchdown catch last week against North Carolina Central. But couldn't haul it in this time. Bulldogs set to punt for a third time. Benjamin, no pressure, gets it away on that left foot. A touchdown at the 48, goes right into the arms of Garden, who is then slung out of bounds. Excellent coverage. Oh, that's your leading tackler down, down the field on coverage. And he he has been outstanding. That's uh, already in this ball game. Lenard is just a heck of a football player. Glad to have you with us here on Flow Football. Again, it is the second quarter between unbeaten 4-0 North Carolina A&T. They have taken care of business this year against their schedule of Gardner-Webb, Mars Hill, FBS member of Conference USA Charlotte, those 49ers, and then most recently against Morgan State to kick off MEAC play this year. Aggies 1-0 in MEAC, most importantly, picked to finish second in the league. Bulldogs are picked to finish third. North Carolina Central expected to be in that mix as well, already 2-0. Uh, you get a good three and out, short kick, great field position. Wouldn't be surprised to see them try to get vertical with Elijah Bell here early in this possession so that they can't get a big play. These Aggies, despite the injury at quarterback last season for Raynard, were able to grab that bid into the FCS playoffs coming out of the MEAC, losing in the opening round to Richmond. Richmond, a powerhouse in re recent years. Still the majority of the second quarter to go here. Changing the play. Saw something different in the defensive alignment. Cartwright up to midfield. Number 10 is all over the field. <laughs> just, when you look at Darius Lenard, he is just a really good football player. Steps in, tough guy to bring down, he was makes your, the play. He was your top player in the MEAC last year, the junior. Talking about the weak side linebacker. He's already the number one all-time tackler in the Bulldogs' rich history. Preseason All-American. From midfield. Good As penetration that time. Nice job of Cartwright spinning out of that. Comes out of the game here, but he has got such quick feet and great vision. He sees this coming right here. You can see that. See that guy coming, tries to plant that left foot. Can't get away from it. Lamar Raynard loves that extra spin to his right during. Almost a complete 360 before he's all said and done during the handoff. Just hoping to grab a little advantage on anybody coming into the backfield defensively. Quick release. Trust his man to make the catch. As Elijah Bell did not have much separation, but the sophomore from Wheeling, West Virginia, squeezes it in. Well, he just has such a big body and body control right here. Shields the defender. This goes up, shows great hands, almost breaks the tackle. Able to beat Alex Brown to the football. Aggie settled for a field goal off the foot of Noel Ruiz, the last possession. From the 39. 
Again, plenty of time. Now space to work with after the catch. It's Trey Scott with his second grab already. Oh, he does a nice job. This is just a drag, tight end drag. A little play action underneath it. Running back comes in front of him, and then you just delay, act like you're blocking, and then drag right across the middle, get separation, and a big play down inside the red zone. And denies the hug at the end of the play. He does. Strictly business right now for the Aggies. Trying to take a two-score lead here in the opening half. Cartwright, lots of white shirts, laying out some blocks, but Cartwright will only pick up a couple of yards when it's all said and done. The combination of Darius Leonard as well as Jason Baxter to make the stump. Now they're trying to misdirection with the faking the jet sweep. Cartwright tries to get behind those big offensive linemen. Does get some positive yards on it on first down. And Leonard just stands him up. Extra protection in the backfield. Down the middle. In the end zone for the first time tonight. As he'll find Malik Wilson for his fourth touchdown already this year. Oh, boy. Nice job. Excellent route. Great blocking up front. Deep post. Play action up front, looks to the left, gets the safety away, and then comes back with the clear, the safety guard. Good pitch and catch for the touchdown. For Raynard, his 13 touchdown toss to no interception so far this season. By well, doing an outstanding job of protecting football. That was a big time drive after the defense got a three and out. A few missed extra points this year for Ruiz. And this one close, but. They'll say is no good. His fifth miss. And that'll make it 9-0. So the Aggies on their last two possessions with points. The field goal and more recently the touchdown toss to Malik Wilson. A really nice job right there of going down at after the defense got a three and out. You got on the board and they just take it right down the field for the touchdown. Miss the extra point. That's one of the things. Those points may come back to bite you at some time. But if what we've seen so far... If you're the Bulldogs at South Carolina State, you have got to find a way to sustain some type of drive right here before the end of the half. The Aggies started 5-0 in that 1993 season. Back in the 40s, a and had some remarkable runs. I believe even finished undefeated on what was a shorter schedule back then. Well, they've been off to an outstanding start. And it, it, the thing that it's impressive to me now seeing on tape and now here tonight it, the things that have impressed me is the fact that they, they're very good up front and offensive and defensive fronts they do an outstanding job of giving their quarterback time and then on the other side their defensive front is taking away the running game they're making teams one-dimensional and it's tough to win when you're a one-dimensional football team lincoln rose keith moreland with you thrilled to have you with us here on flow football again the aggies Leading 9 nothing over the home squad Bulldogs. Bulldogs were up 21-7 last week against North Carolina Central. A promising start in that ball game for the Bulldogs against one of the favorites in the MEAC. But turnovers. It ultimately cost them really. Lead to some explosive plays for North Carolina Central. And they would watch the lead evaporate down the stretch. A good return here. Going to have good starting field position. Again, the Make a little star on my sheet here that this for me is if you're going to stay in this ball game, I think you got to come away with points, get a good return, good starting field position almost to the 35. Now, Xavier Burson on the return for the Bulldogs, setting them up with their best starting field position so far at the 34 yard line. Bulldogs, again, their only problem is with an offense that relies so much on 
the different ways of running, they can't fall too far behind. They're, they're, you're right. They're, they're not a team that needs to play for behind. You see Jenkins with the carry that time. Redshirt freshman getting his opportunity. They go empty right here. About a two-yard gain sets up second and eight. Empty backfield for Ford. And a couple of Aggies go sprinting across the line of scrimmage. Let's see if that trends this down to second and three. It, it will. Jermaine Williams, the nose guard, he was going to get off the ball that time. <laughs> with the contact, there's no free play available for the Bulldogs. They'll just settle again here for uh, about two, two yards needed. Well, it changes your offensive theory, though. If you're second long yeah. and now you're second and short, to, to see different personnel, and we do in the ball game for the Bulldogs. Ford, good protection. I say that did not release the football. He still has it. Now will air it out. Wants the flag on the coverage. Not going to get it. And it all comes up Aggies. Well, Burroughs, how about getting away? He would, to all intents and purposes, it looked like he was going down. He was able to spin out of it. As he gets back, see Ford. Looks like he's going down, like he's going to get rid of it. And he just finds a way to get out of that and then launches it. Burroughs almost made a spectacular catch going to the football. In fact, I would guarantee you Burroughs yeah. would think, I need to catch that football. Yeah, it looked like Burroughs actually had a legitimate shot at it. Third and short. Just need two. They'll keep the drive alive on the legs of Dewan Ford. Boy, an excellent read on, on what is called the speed option to the outside. He just does a nice job of taking the snap. Run speed option to the wide side of the field. Makes that decision right here. Plants that right foot. And when he makes that decision, he knows he's got two yards to get. and gets more than that. So valuable. The sophomore quarterback. A yard shy of midfield. Down by nine. Still has it. Open space. Puts his speed to test. And the strip fumble, the Aggies have it. Falling on it is Daryl Johnson. Oh, another great play for the Bulldogs that in the end turns sour. Well, I tell you what, didn't see it coming. It seemed break to the outside. They fake the one side zone read. The mesh goes on and he breaks to the outside. Just an outstanding job by Jeremy Taylor to strip that football. Comes in with his right hand after his feet from behind. They didn't know Ta he didn't know Taylor was there. No. Got that big swipe on him with his right hand. Takes away a big play. Taylor, turnover. Taylor, not content with just making a tackle, nope. reached out and strips that ball away. And now two turnovers by the Bulldogs. One on special teams. One here on offense. And both of them after big plays. Yeah. Raynard, quick release, sound into the flat. One on one. That'll be a, close to a first down. Another connection with one of his favorites when you talk about Malik Wilson. Completion, lots and lots of territory out there. A lot of soft coverage, eight or ten yards off the ball. Easy pitch and catch. Might as well take that yardage when you get it. Wilson hadn't had a catch since that touchdown on the last play for the Aggies offense. Inside of five minutes here in the opening half. Open running room. Hits the hole and close to midfield. Another big gain on the legs of Cartwright. And you can't overlook that offensive line parting the C4. Boy, I tell you what, this is a huge hole. Really nice job up front. Gets a good kick out ball from Simpson on the outside. And they want to move quickly. That hole quickly filled, this time by a familiar foe in Shaquille Crouch. Just get the feeling that the Bulldogs have got to find a way to get a turnover or a stop here to keep themselves in this ballgame. All the momentum now on the for the Aggies. 
In Cartwright's place on this play, it'll be Jamari Smith in the backfield out of Jacksonville, the transfer. Oh, well, pump fake. Raynard has his man over the shoulder, able to bring it in is Wilson. The perfect pass to Wilson, who's shaken up now at the end of the play. But this is a perfectly thrown ball. You cannot throw it any better. But Lamar Hennard does a nice job. Double fake, out and up. He's got a blitzer coming. Lays this ball up perfectly to the outside. Only his receiver can make the play. And they're down almost in the red zone. Dropped it right in. Again, will not have Malik Wilson available on this play. But still plenty of talent out there at receiver. Back in is Cartwright. And again, cannot elude the arms of your top returning player in the MEAC. <laughs> he's just outstanding. You can tell why he's a preseason All-American. Bernard, this number 10, you've seen him on your screen all night long. He's got to have 10 tackles already here in the first half. And you wonder if they bring in the extra running back just to kind of pull from his attention so he has to commit to one or the other there in the backfield. A lot of fakes of the zone, the jet sweep, the zone read in other directions. Amos Williams, number 23, only has one carry this year, but he can fly. And he does get the carry. Able to turn the corner. I had a block in place, and a late flag comes flying in after Amos picks Williams up the first down. Well, he does have outstanding speed. Did a nice job of dipping that Right shoulder in, running to his left. The defenders just have a little bit of pause, and he's able to get the corner. See what the call is here. He's going to come back. The receiver, Bell, called for the hold out there on the edge. Now your job as a receiver is that guy start, you know the place coming behind you. Sometimes you, but you're so visible. For that line judge on the outside, he can see if you get your hands outside those shoulder pads. You can get a little jersey if you're inside those yeah. shoulder pads. You get outside and you're going to get called. So this will push the Aggies back a bit. Cartwright is now, or pardon me, Jamari Smith is your lone featured back with 4-1. Smith. There was not much to work with there. A minimal gain for the Aggies. I think that'll bring up third down. This is none bigger than this right here. Smith, you can see right there. Where is he going to go? Use your eyes if you're at home as a running back. Where are you going to go right there? This is no place to go. Yeah, a tough read altogether. That'll be third. And... Let's see what the Aggies have in store, whether they have to settle for a second field goal trunk. They'll need a team really interested in using any of their timeouts. We're down to nearly a minute left in a half. It's a long three. They need the 21-yard line. It's going to be a timeout by the Aggies. Their first timeout used this half. Their last two drives have led to points, a field goal and a touchdown. Looking to pour on a few more before we go to the locker room. Well, you, when, you just look at the scenario here. That for me, that this is a crucial point in this ball game right now. Obviously, North Carolina A&T has had the upper hand. They've got an opportunity. They've got all the momentum. They, they want to keep pushing forward. On the other side, you've got to force a field goal attempt right here if it, if you're in South Carolina, you can keep it a two-score game at this point. If you, you can find a way to hold it to a field goal attempt. And second half, you know you're going to get the football to start the second half. It's a South Carolina State squad. One of the questions for Coach Pugh was their secondary, but he thinks they've come on strong. We've also seen their front seven, for the most part, be able to take care of business often limiting Cartwright to just a yard, but the few times that that O-line for the Aggies gives Cartwright a hole, he's been able to gas. Yes, he has. 
Looks like the Bulldogs may come after him here. Again, they need the 21-yard line on third and three. Brainerd airs it out from the end zone. Almost his first interception of the season as the closest man to the football was Jason Baxter of South Carolina State. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, trying to get Elijah Bell on a stop and go. He came out, ran a little stop, and he couldn't get up the field. Thought he was going to get up the field. You can see Bell late to get there. Almost got picked off. Now, is this four down territory? Or do they go to try the field goal attempt? This would be a 41-yard try. We mentioned Ruiz was 0 for 2 on field goals. He made his first earlier tonight. Much closer. Did miss his last kick, an extra point. And again, South Carolina State had all three of their timeouts, and they're going to just try to make Ruiz think about it a little longer. Yeah, that, that's the first thing. Yeah, you're right. The other part is, is there a fake involved? I mean, this is that third or uh, fourth and three. It's in that short yeah. category. Uh, it is a longer type field goal. I think this is a really good timeout uh, for Coach Pugh, and he's he going, hey, all right, guys, let's don't go out and try to block this thing. They may run a fake. Let's get prepared. Uh, for an opportunity for a fake and make sure we're in our normal defense. Yeah, remember, they only would need three yards. My only thought is if they're going to go for it on fourth down, just line that Aggies offense up out right. there with the tools that you have rather than trying to work it through your holder, uh, red, I agree. a redshirt freshman and uh, Bobby Gentile. I agree with you, but the, the, these coaches are all week long. These schools work across the yeah. country. They work on on fakes and might be an opportunity right here. Stay on sides as well. Make sure you watch the snap of the football. Pardon me, it's Garrett Nestor, the holder. And South Carolina State calls back-to-back -back timeouts. I think in the NFL that would cost you some yardage. But in the college game, they go consecutive with the timeouts called just again to see how the Aggies line up. <laughs> they saw how they were lining up. But right now, you want to make sure you did, didn't have too many pers personnel in the field. Sometimes, too, you, you get over there and you're a DC and you get yeah. through, you put your team out and count on Wait a minute. That would be a first down. Yeah, we got too many guys on the field. Let's call timeout. So neither team had needed a timeout this entire first half until this final minute. Now, three of them have been burned. Why not? Can't take them with you. You see what the Aggies would need. They would need to be inside the 12-yard line, close to the 11 for a first down here on 4th and 13. That holding call set them back a couple plays ago. Ruiz, one for one tonight on field goals, did miss an extra point on his last kick. From 41 yards. Will it stay inside the upright? Hits off the upright, and it's through. A 12-point advantage for the Aggies. Boy, Jed catch that upright. Second time we've seen that upright hit in this ball game. Right upright the last time. It was no good this time. It got back into the field of play, but a win. If you're a South Carolina State Bulldog yeah. fan, it, that's a win. To keep it a two-possession game, uh, get your opportunity. Your defense has really stepped up when they've gotten down in the red zone. Remember, that's three points off a turnover from the Bulldogs offense. Two turnovers from the Bulldogs in this half, and yet they're still within two scores. Very much in this ball game. Now 56 seconds to go here in the half. If you can get a good return. You only have one timeout. But that's a win. I mean, when a team gets down there and you can find a way to force that field goal, that's a win defensively. And Ruiz can take some pride with him as he puts that ball down on the tee. He's made both of his field goal attempts tonight after being 0 for 2 to start this season. You don't get a lot of opportunities with this Aggies offense with the way they've been scoring touchdowns. And this Bulldogs offense move the ball quickly. We talked about two-minute drills. They'll have this ball with about 50 seconds. Looking for a big return. On that far sideline, they'll have first and 10 from their own 32-yard line. Only one timeout. It's always about getting the first. If you're going to go to hurry up, it's always about getting that first first down. That stops the clock. If you can do that on the first play, you can start to get some momentum going, get up the field, the clock is stopped, and get the next snap. 
Well, remember, it's one thing if the Bulldogs still had all three of their timeouts, yeah, but they, they, used, they two. used two of them back-to-back -back before that successful field goal. So they're going to be looking for sideline and first downs to at least briefly stop the clock. And Dewan Ford, we're likely to see his arm be put to use a little more often than we've seen so far here in the first half. The Aggies know it. They're coming out in full speed. He'll just try to throw it away to stop that clock. And now the question is whether there's intentional grounding. As the... Yeah, the explanation, there was a receiver in the area. Our two officials doing the right job, locking eyes and communicating. He was out of the box. There was a receiver in the area. Look at that scenario. And the 48 ticks still left on the clock. Uh, I would not be surprised to see some kind of draw here. Uh, run the football. Just took about five seconds off the clock that last play. Up the middle, nothing fancy. And that will either indicate to us that they're ready to run out the clock or we'll see if they use a timeout on this next play if they can't get a first down. Uh, I, I, I don't think they want to punt the football in this scenario, so I don't think they'll be in much of a hurry up. They're going to try to get the first down. And as much time run off the clock as yeah. they can. They need a long four yards, and they appear content with a 12-point deficit. They will need to snap this football, I believe, one more time. You just keep it on the ground and protect it. And there's a flag that's going to come in on a, a hit, I believe, high on the quarterback who's giving himself up. Let's see if a targeting call factors in here. Or if they're looking at something else. If it's holding against the Bulldogs, see, the half is over. That's the case. So the first two quarters in the books, the Aggies scored 12 points on their final three drives. But the silver lining for the home squad Bulldogs of South Carolina State still within two scores here at home. This could be a classic in the making here in the MEAC. Still anybody's ball game as we head to the halftime. 12-0. Aggies out on top. This 
Champagne personified. One more time for the ladies of Champagne. Let's go, marching 101. Max Power. Well, halftime is a lot of occasions around college football when the fans will get up and go to the concession stands, take care of anything they need to. I don't think anybody left their seats during halftime here tonight. The show from both marching bands, phenomenal. Well, it was outstanding. Now we get back to, to football. The Bulldogs are going to get the ball to start the second half. If they're going to get back in this game, got to come away with points on this drive. Which team made the best adjustments at halftime to come back out? 
stayed in the ball game by forcing the couple of field goals late in the half did South Carolina State. Now they got to take advantage and put some points on the board themselves. Look, if you're the Bulldogs, you turned the football over twice against this Aggie squad, and right now you are two touchdowns, a couple of extra points away from having a lead. Uh, you, and both both turnovers came after big plays, one in the kicking game and one with a run. So 12-0 our score at the start of the third quarter. Ruiz, who had a couple of field goals to factor in, kicks this one off. And full speed ahead for the Bulldogs, looking for an answer on special teams. And a nice job, ultimately, again, setting them up as the Bulldogs will bring out their offense. Let's see if there's a marker or not. There is a holding, too good to be true. During that return from Xavier Burson. Burson gets a seam. It's right at the point of attack. You can see it down there. Boy, instead of being in Aggie territory, they're going to be backed up. So it'll be a first and ten for Dewan Ford running this offense as a sophomore, a young man who, when I asked his head coach, Buddy Pugh, who's your most improved player, he went straight to the, his signal caller. A young guy can run and throw. He's really improved on his progressions. Will be called to air it out here. And that's a dangerous ball. They will say it hits the turf. So no threat of an interception there. But he was looking for Quan Caldwell for the first time tonight. Caldwell had a touchdown last week against North Carolina Central to help give them a two-touchdown lead at the time. It'll simply be second and ten coming up for oh, the 25. Ford paid the price here, though, Lincoln. He just was blown up right as he's delivering the football. Had no chance to step in it. See if he's a little more gun shy. Has a couple of running backs behind him. And is not going to be able to outrun the pursuit that came from Marcus Albert, your preseason all-conference strong side linebacker. Uh, he just bounced it to the outside. Good adjustment down. It's going to be third and long. Just bounced him to the outside and had great speed to bring him down at the end. His Albert just shows you his great athletic ability right here. Cuts him off and brings him down. I mean, a loss of about three. They'll say third and a long 12. Empty backfield with five wide for Ford. Look to the sideline for the audible. Good protection on the left side. Plenty of time is going to tuck it down. And again, Dwan Ford's a young man where the moment he doesn't feel comfortable, he's going to start running. Uh, just great coverage. That, that is a, doesn't go as a sack, but that is a covered sack in, in a sense. He, he had nowhere to go with the football. Had time here. Five receivers out. Great job in the secondary. Bought time, bought time. Then he realized right here, says, I got nowhere to go with it. On third and 12, he'll just pick up a couple. It'll be time to punt the football. Again, the sophomore Cliff Benjamin back on. The Aggies should have great starting field position for their first drive of the third quarter. High snap, able to haul it in. Garden, running the wrong way. Needs a block, gets it, peeled back. And Garden in the end, if you gave him a pedometer, might have met his quota for the day, but <laughs> <laughs> didn't go anywhere. He's up to the 38 yard line. Uh, 62 yards running <laughs> and he gained four. I think that worked with Earl Campbell on the old video games. He took this ball at the 35-yard line. He's all the way back to the 15 before he makes his way back up. Yeah. And finds a way to get three yards on the return. That's a good diet if you can get it. Eat anything you want and then just have some Bulldogs chase you for a while. Well, I just look at food and get away. <laughs> you and I need to join the marching bands. Imagine the calories burned. All right, so, defensively, what, what adjustments did you make here? That's that's the other thing now. If, if you're South Carolina, they, 
they really did a nice job of stepping up, but their defense stepped up when they were in the red zone. They had a really difficult time in the middle part of the field where they could get their offense some decent field position. And I'll go back to the opening of the, of our broadcast when we talked about they needed to get some turnovers. They have given up to, have gotten none. Yeah, history does not bode well for teams that are a minus two in the turnover battle. But the Aggies at the same time have only ended one drive in the end zone. It was a touchdown toss from Ford, his 13th on the year. Or pardon me, from Raynard when he found Malik Wilson for a fourth time in the end zone. Cartwright trying to get around that tackle. Nowhere to go, and let me know if you've seen number 10 on any plays tonight. <laughs> He's been everywhere, hasn't he? Darius Leonard along with Jason Baxter for moral support. I'm going to give Baxter a lot of credit right here. He's the red shirt senior from Manning, South Carolina, and he really did an outstanding job of coming up from his free safety position to kick, kick out to the outside and bring that down for almost no gain. Raynard looks left the whole way. And we talk about his delivery. What a quick release. He fires a dart to Ron Hunt. That's a really good route on the outside, too, as they bounce this quickly. There's a little stop pattern where he just he sprints down, gets out to the sideline, gets that release, and then puts a stop on it. Ball comes out of his hands perfectly. And he is right there when he comes that back to the football, right there. Pitch and catch first down. Hunt the sophomore out of Greensboro with his fourth grab on the year. And the Aggies across midfield now at the 42 of the Bulldogs. Brainerd with plenty of options here. Literally, the option run, he'll keep it. <laughs> there is, again, uh, Bulldogs eager. Let's see. Whether that was Devondre Powell or Leonard in on the stop. Well, Leonard's going to be somewhere close to the football, there's no question. Yeah, that's Powell, number 19, with the cast on his left arm. Hard to play strong safety with a cast. Maybe difficult to catch the football. He's been watching a lot of Odell Beckham Jr. footage, of seeing, yeah. seeing how you do that with one hand. Oh. RPO, ball comes out, but he was already on the ground. After he was down, but he was swallowed up by Tiberius Cravens. It's that run pass option. So difficult on defense, as you can see him set up. Looks like a run. No, I'm not going to pull it back because he had a receiver. Just a great job of getting in the way. Ball is ripped out, but after he's already on the ground, again, another huge third down play here in this third quarter. If you're Rainer, do you think you have two running backs blocking in front of you, but what you don't account for is Cravens eating up that tackle quickly on the right side. Showing blitz here. Don't coverage though for the Bulldogs. Protections there. Oh, a dangerous pass and picked off for the first time this year. For the Bulldogs is Jason Baxter. Forcing the first turnover of the game by this defense. Well, that was huge. Needed a stop, needed a turnover, and they got it. They dropped, it showed zone, dropped eight into coverage, rushed three. The pressure was there. And he steps up, delivers the football. I think this is off of one of his receivers. Yeah. Ball was tipped up in the air. But there were five Bulldogs around the receiver. If Capel he had his hands on it. If as a quarterback you haven't had the year you've had, 71% passer, you're probably not looking at that as being a favorable situation. And it does cost them this time. Can the Bulldogs turn this into points? Still looking for their first score on the night. Baxter, his first pick in this, his fifth and final year on campus.
And he took a little hit. Gets a look at and appears to be good to go. Defensive players always, you can see him again, stepping up right here. The pressure. This gets right in Capel. Puts a big blow right there to knock it out. And I tell you, the two names we've talked about all night, 34 and 10, and that was Taylor right there getting the big blow in the middle linebacker. Yeah, Deshaun Taylor made sure that there would not be a second chance to catch that football. Bulldogs from their own 27. You just keep seeing now the six, seven guys in the box. The Aggies are just taking away the option in the running game. They're going to have to get something going in, in the vertical passing game. You just feel you're going to have to soften up this defense and get those guys out of the box. Yeah, Jeremy Taylor not fooled in on that tackle for the Aggies defense. It's a defense that, again, has only given up 12 points per ball game. And just not on the same page. Ford tried to force that ball to the outside. Continuity, when you're, you're third and ten all the time, it's very difficult to get you, your offense into some kind of rhythm. Got to find a way to get ahead of the chains. Put yourself in second and short. Because the Aggies' defense, this is when they pin their ears back and come after you. Maggie's defense this year that has given up less than 100 yards per game rushing, a little under 200 yards per game passing to opposing offenses. At the moment, shutting down one of their rivals, the Bulldogs. And just threw it behind an open receiver as he was looking for LeBron Morris out of the backfield. Oh, he was open too. He started forward. That drew the linebacker. Watch as Ford gets outside. The pocket breaks down as he pulls it. Pulls that linebacker to him. Open on the outside. He might have run. He might have taken that to the house. Instead, they're going to have to punt the football away. So at the moment, it appears the Bulldogs will be unable to take advantage of the first turnover tonight by the Aggies. This a and defense has been outstanding in this ballgame. And we have called Benjamin the punter's name a little too often tonight. From the 35 for Garden. Almost lost the football and is content just to finish with it and a late flag comes in. Possibly the helmet. This is, I think this is going to be late. A late hit. Like there was some extracurricular activity at the end of this. It could be two fouls on the play. We saw one official grab his wrist as if there may have been a hold. Oh. We did see at the end of the tackle into the play that Ford, a junior linebacker, kind of lowered his helmet right at the end of the play to clean it up. We'll let them straighten it all out. There are two fouls to play first on receiving team. Holding, receiving team number 21. That penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 21. That penalty being enforced. And your penalty. Well, good news for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I ever did, did, knew there were two fouls in the play right here at the end. They're trying to cut back to the inside. Watch this ball come out. Oh, opportunity missed right there for the Bulldogs. Now you've got to find a way to fill a stop up here again. Get another turnover, create a turnover. You just get that feeling. We're almost at the halfway mark of the third quarter that any more points offensively for North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State could be in real big trouble. Crowded backfield. 
Guess who? Yeah. This uh, tackle brought to you by Darius Leonard. The MIAC player of the year last year. He is a good football player. Does such a great job. He's got a great feel for the opposing offense. And then he uses his, his eyes to get in great position to make tackles. And then the last part of it, he finishes. When you make tackles, you want to finish, wrap up. Down the middle, throws another dart. And right where it had to be for Garden to make the catch and move the sticks. Bernard does a great job here watching. The, right here, he sees it. Pump fake sort of because he knows he has somebody right in the throwing lane. Allows the receiver to continue. Pulls the ball down. Makes a perfect pitch and catch for the first down. So the next first down will likely have to come in Bulldog territory. Up top, just got tangled up and not going to get any help. That ball was overthrown looking for Elijah Bell. Well, Bell is that guy that's tough to get off the line of scrimmage. He gets by. He's open right there. Ball was a little bit overthrown. He does have a little bit of a collision as he's adjusting to the football. Incidental contact. That's a good no call. A lot of RPOs, a lot of run pass option by AT&T at this point where they, the play action really holds the linebackers. Cross the line of scrimmage, takes a pop, and he'll go down after two yards. Paid the price for that two yards right there. Still down. Uh, a good sign as he simply reaches up. He'll have to come out of the game, though, because the... They did call a time, did call injury time timeout, out, so he'll right. be out of the game for at least one snap. You can see him right here, runs from the outside, makes that decision. Boy, he takes a blow right there. Ooh. Tell me this game's not physical? Yeah, we have said the name of Shaquille Crouch a few times tonight, and there is, again, the, at least for one play, Khalil Carter, your junior quarterback, making his third appearance on the year. Usually it's in mop-up duty. Is this anything other than a handoff? Yeah, I mean, it's third and eight. I think you got to try to make the first down. I yeah. mean, this is punting territory. Trying to get the right personnel, both sides get the personnel on the field. <laughs> Let me predict this is not a handoff. Empty backfield for the new quarterback. Now, if the Aggies call a timeout, they can bring Raynard back in. Yes, they can. And then with he may be healthy enough right here. Third and eight's just too important if he's available. This is one of those opportunities where you take a timeout, understanding where you can really separate yourself in this ball game if you can find a way to get points. You got good field position, almost to midfield, and it also allows you maybe, as you mentioned, to get your quarterback back in the ball game. But at the moment, we still see Carter in the huddle. It's going to be a third and eight from their own 47-yard line. Well, there he comes. You can see Lamar trying to talk his coach. No. He's going back and says, Coach, I'm ready to go. He's staying on the sideline. He's in that huddle, was with his coaches, but the helmet stayed off. Run, running formation, at least all night. Yeah, both North Carolina a and in this formation has run the football. Cartwright and Smith, your two backs, with Carter, the quarterback. Into a pocket. He'll tuck it down and run. He's trying to muscle his way to a first down and will be stopped two yards shy. He picked the wrong bulldog to get a fight into with. Well, I'm telling you what, this is a perfect form tackle. Nobody there puts it down. Looks like he's got a chance to get the first down and then right here. Nope. Just welcome. A little 10 on 10 crime. 
And they're going to punt the football away here. There's an excited young man right there and one of the best in the country. You almost wish you could line him up on offense. He's one of the biggest, one of the best football players I've seen this season. They come for it. A block. Able to just fall on it when it's all said and done. The Bulldogs come through with a big play. As for the home squad, it's Bruce Johnson. Who got the block and the recovery. He's the guy that got through just in the center penetration right here. Watch him get through, get that hand up, gets the football, gets it down, and has a presence of mind to get it picked up. Almost, if he holds his yeah. feet, he scores. That was the one fortunate thing for the Aggies. There wasn't a scoop and score. This offense for South Carolina State is still going to have to march at about 31 yards to get into the end zone for the first time. See if they don't try to get some running game, establish some of the running game right now. New quarterback for the Bulldogs, Tyrese Nick. And Nick down just shy of the 23 yard line. He's a six foot 170 pounder. A freshman out of Johnston, South Carolina. So he replaces Dewan Ford. Midway through the third quarter. Good first down play. Positive yards. Keeps it. Drops the football. Turnover to the Aggies. And it's Jeremy Taylor coming up with it. Just gets stripped. Trying to get away. The mesh just didn't look like good at the beginning. Watch this mesh. Didn't look good right there. And he breaks loose from that. And then right here, ball's just swiped out of his hands. And that boy, that is a huge turnover created by the Aggie defense. All three Aggies turnovers that they have forced have been preceded by a big, big play, play for the Bulldogs. Now, that was a couple plays prior. But these Aggies, again, you talk about the difference between a scoop and a score on a block oh, punt. Oh, that's it? As opposed to simply... Now, the smart thing was done. He fell on that football when he realized that it was... The only way to secure that ball on a turnover, but the number two quarterback comes in and coughs it up. All right, so now defense, just you back out on the field as the next defensive player right here. You still got the mindset, all right, we're still in the game, still in the game. But you know how you, the only way you're going to get this defense charged up is to put some points on the board. Well, you look at all those years of great history here at Dawson Stadium for the Bulldogs. They have owned this rivalry, but just not recently. You've seen the Aggies come on so strong under the leadership of Rod Broadway and his impressive career at different stops at various HBCUs. Most recently, Grambling before this. No quarterback change for the Aggies. Obviously, it's Raynard. And a little stumble after the handoff by Amos Williams. Uh, Lamar probably at this point, though, it's a little bit, you know, I'm not sure you'll put it down as often as he was doing it earlier in the game. But a good first down play right here. It's and it was Cartwright, forgive me, not Williams. Lost his footing. Still a two-score ball game. Pressure on the Aggies to have a productive drive here. Quick release on second and nine, a gain of about four. It'll be a manageable third down coming up. After. That's that's a nice job of buying time. As a quarterback, sometimes you're rolling out, you got to buy some time, buy some time, let your receiver come open, and then nice job coming back to the football. You finish your route, your quarterback's in trouble, come back to the football, and he does that. Makes it a manageable third down. Ron Hunt with his second grab on the day, had three through the first four ball games. Well, last year it was Tariq Cohen in that backfield. You lose him, and there hasn't been much of a drop-off with the fourth-year junior Cartwright. And let's straighten out these whistles. Look at timeout. A timeout called by the visitors.
So the Aggies have one timeout remaining here in the second half. Didn't like the defensive formation. They got to the line of scrimmage and their play selection at that point. They, it's one of those scenarios where, you know, I, I don't like this play call, but what we got here, understanding that, hey, we're at the point here where if we get a first down, we can, even if we don't score, we can take another two or three minutes off of the clock, uh, you know, get this game into the fourth quarter with, in a two possession game. On the other side, if you look at the Bulldogs, they're thinking right now, you know, defensively, we have found a way to keep them out of the end zone all but one time. So we're in this game. Can we do it again right here? Tommy Restivo's defense for South Carolina State has found a way to hold one of the most prolific offenses in all the FCS, the number 13 ranked team in the nation, as voted on by the coaches this past week, to just 12 points so far. A couple of field goals, a touchdown, and a missed extra point is how we've gotten here to 12 nothing. That can change in a hurry when that man is your quarterback. Man coverage. Brainerd through the air. Drops it right in. And the Aggies will connect on the big play to Xavier Griffin. His first touchdown catch of the season. And all of a sudden, Aggie's back in the end zone. And he'll get some celebration flags coming in at the end of it all. But one of his teammates ripped his helmet off. He didn't do it. What a pass right here. This is just out. Going to your left, lays this ball up perfectly. Really spin it. Laid it out perfectly. Nice move right here back to the inside. That is a backbreaker for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. How many chances do the Bulldogs have to cut into a 12-point ball game? In the end, the Aggies finally made them pay. Again, the unsportsmanlike conduct, they'll assess that on the kickoff. You know what? I feel for it. I, I, I really I really feel for Griffin. Griffin did not get the right. excessive penalty. It's one of his teammates come yeah. celebrate, got his helmet, and, and got a hold of it and accidentally ripped it off his head. And because of that, they're going to fake it here and go for a two-point conversion. No good. They wanted to make up for the missed extra point earlier. And again, extra points have not been a given for these Zaggies. Credit to the Bulldogs. They were ready. So it is still, though, a three-possession ball game regardless. And Ruiz never got a chance to put his foot into this ball. Well, this is one of those scenarios. You got the swinging gate there, and it snapped, and you try to get it to the outside, and nothing, nothing going there. The Defense right there to make the stand. Yeah, so how about the pass from Lamar Bernard right there? That Bernard, I, 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 I got to tell you, that's one of the prettiest passes I've seen this season. He laid that ball out perfectly. He's had a few of those here tonight. Just dropping them right in where they need to be so the receiver never has to slow down. Well, this is perfectly, it really turns his shoulders, perfect spiral in a perfect location. Outstanding. Leads him into open spaces as Griffin becomes the most recent Aggie receiver to score a touchdown this year. Back to the 20 here for the kickoff. Should be good field position for the Bulldogs who... At this point, maybe four downs from now on to get back in this ballgame. They've got to get something going offensively. They've been shut out to this point, obviously. Ruiz will be able to send this to the 32. Out to the 44. Good starting field position right here. Yeah, again, Burson, their reliable return man, gets him close to midfield. All right, you made a move. You went to your backup quarterback your last time. Two plays. He let gave the football up when he turned it over. It would be interesting to see who comes out at the quarterback position right now for the Bulldogs. Yeah, my question is, who can air out that football and give you a chance to get vertical? Tyrese Nick came in on the previous drive. This is Ford back in the game. And the pitch out to Trey Samuel, who's been limited here tonight. And they are going to stick with Nick at quarterback. 
the freshman. So second and eight, they need to cross midfield. For the A and T 47. Eight guys down on the box right now. They just all wanted to be on camera. This is hard to run the football. You, did you, you more, more people to block than you've got blockers, and you got those guys down in the box. But they're just basically saying, uh, throw the, you, you're not going to run the football. You're going to have to get the ball in the air. Daryl Johnson, number 40, is having himself a night. Good penetration. Forces it to the outside. That's how you make a tackle. So no gain, third and eight. And they need the 47 of A&T. Typical passing down, and they do bring in Dewan Ford now for this snap. Has his receiver, has the first down. As he connects with Burroughs. 6'2", 200 pound sophomore right there from Charlotte, North Carolina. Really does a nice job again using that big frame, shielded off. Good hands here right at the top, too. Come down inbounds for the first down. That was must have. Bulldogs need to start stringing some positive plays together. Can they build on this? Plenty of protection. Airs it out. And just underthrows the intended receiver that time in Quan Caldwell. Caldwell had a half a step, but ball was a little bit underthrown. Had to come back. You see he was upset. upset. There are times when you're making your move, though, to the outside. You try to get that separation. The ball was a little bit underthrown. And Bulldogs facing their largest deficit of the night after the Aggies were able to punch in that last drive for a second touchdown this evening. Aggies have been unsuccessful on extra point conversion tries, both kicks and when running plays. Ford with Aggies giving chase. And we'll simply take it out of bounds with a minute and a half to go. Quickly, flag here late. There's no flag. It's a little bit of confusion on each side. I knew we had a couple of players tangled up there, but there was no flag called on the play. Buddy Pugh of South Carolina State, when we spoke to him earlier this week, he said, look, A&T lost a lot of good players last year, but their team is better. He has been able to reload. He referring to opposing head coach Rod Broadway. Buddy Pugh said, I'm ready for some of these seniors for the Aggies to go, and I'm ready for some of the juniors, frankly, <laughs> to enter the draft and get out of here. Well, this will not help the Bulldogs. Burroughs called for a personal foul. I knew that there was... You heard a lot of whistles. Yeah, I knew there was something going on now. But this puts you in third and forever. And now the Aggies just need to make avoid making a big mistake. They should be getting the football back. Although the Bulldogs converted on their last third down. Yeah, but this, again, this... They are backed up now. Board your quarterback. Has time. Still behind line of scrimmage. Now has no choice but to keep running. And, well, it doesn't lead to much. Marcus Albert was there to end the play. I, I think here in the third quarter, you've got to punt the football away and try to back up the Aggies, and that's what they'll have to do. But you hope you're great defense? start. Yeah, great yeah. starting field position doesn't turn into points again. You're just hopeful that your defense or your special teams again can come through with a big play. This will land in the end zone for the touchback. 
So the Aggies will have to run a play on offense before we say farewell to the third quarter here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Aggies in hostile territory with their 4-0 mark being threatened. But so far, so good tonight for the visitors. They're going to be a little over a quarter away from improving to 5-0 if they can maintain the advantage right now up 18-0. Yeah, you know that you can see the Bulldogs are going to try to go after strips, those kind of things. I would expect them to stay on the ground quite a bit here, try to eat up as much clock as they can, especially if they can get ahead of the change by getting positive yardage on first down. A lot of cart right right now. Number 22. Bulldogs were held to eight points in their loss against Southern in the season opener, but that's the fewest points they've scored so far. Aggies would love to complete a shutout. That is going to be your final play, the run from Cartwright here in this third quarter. So coming out of halftime, it was 12-0. The Aggies tack on six more with the touchdown toss from Raynard. His 14th touchdown pass on the season already. Aggies trying to improve to 2-0 and in the MEAC are one quarter away when we come back the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter coming up here at Dawson Stadium as the Aggies squaring off against the Bulldogs in MEAC play. Week two of MEAC for these two squads. Let's welcome you back up to the booth. Lincoln Rose, Keith Moreland with you. And Keith, the Bulldogs here at home, they have had some big plays tonight, just have not been able to capitalize. They haven't been able to take advantage of any type of field position throughout the ball game, And because of that, they've had to go long fields. And when you have to drive the ball long field against a really good yeah. A and T defense, you're going to struggle. See here in the fourth quarter, if they can get a stop, maybe get a short field, and then they're going to have to get vertical. They're going to have to get involved in the passing game. They can no longer maintain it on the ground, being down a three possession game. Remember, this Aggies offense is averaging 46 points a ball game. The Bulldogs were holding them to just 12 up until that most recent touchdown. Yeah, and they have, they haven't done well on extra points. So obviously, they held them two field goals down inside the 20 yard line. So defensively. South Carolina State has done an outstanding job. Got to give a lot of credit to the defense, though, for North Carolina A&T. They have really taken away any offensive game plan on the night so far for, for the Bulldogs. Now, starting here in the fourth quarter, you've got a second down, second and long. Right now, the job for me is uh, try to get a strip, try to get a turnover, try to get a short field. They just haven't had but one short field all night. Again, Aggies with the football. This will be second down after Cartwright had the run to end the third quarter and it will now be third and long. Well, that, was, that was a really nice job of, of getting pressure that time. You could see Bernard in there to, to get pressure, got in on him, made the play. Alex Brown with fantastic coverage. Boy, this is, if you're going to have any shot in this ball game here in the fourth quarter, got to get a stop right here. And announcement is there was no penalty for what they initially thought may have been an ineligible receiver downfield. So third and long for the Aggies. Get a few of those in the run pass option game. 45% on third down, better than that tonight for the Aggies. Again, a great pocket, dumps it down to Cartwright, and he cannot avoid the sure-arm tackle of Deshaun Taylor, who, again, has been solid tonight. I think we have complimented almost every defender for the Bulldogs this evening. They have given their team a chance here at home. No, no doubt. And did a nice job keeping him in the pocket with a three-man rush, dropping eight, and then being good, sure tacklers. And they've come out to make plays, get the tackle, force the punt here. What we're overlooking there is obviously great coverage in the secondary. Yep. The reason why he had to dump it down. That's James Mackey in to punt. As it's hauled in by Dwayne Nichols. And the Bulldogs again some favorable field position at their own 38-yard line coming up for first down. Well, 
again, going to have to get the passing game going, get something across the middle, uh, get an opportunity to maybe get a double move on the outside. Most importantly, I think, is to find some kind of confidence. This is a team offensively it is, hasn't been very confident so far. They, they haven't been able to string together consistently, consistent plays, positive plays consistently offensively tonight. Well, again, it's about 77 degrees in Orangeburg, and the atmosphere here has been fantastic. Uh, if you're the MEAC, this is college football that anybody can be proud of. We've seen some hard hits, some exciting plays on offense. And an enjoyable Saturday evening. Obviously, the home fans would appreciate. They'd love to get into it, but they've been taken out because yeah. they haven't got anything going offensively. Not since the marching band was on the field did the at halftime did the both sides, home and away, have something to really go full voice cheering at. I think you'll see a lot of empty here now here in this fourth quarter. Ford did return at quarterback in the midst of that last drive. A young man who would like to run the ball, just not in that situation, down by 18. Dumps it through, and a dangerous ball after is not initially caught by Josh Williams. Boy, just got this football off. He had pressure from the outside on, on a speed rush from the outside. It just got this football off. And it was Mac McLean who broke up that play, and we have not, because of the lack of an aerial attack from the Bulldogs, been able to talk much about Mac McLean, a really fresh, good player. freshman with five interceptions this year. Last week took two back for touchdowns, and the last two weeks has had three pick sixes. Ford. Airs one out, connects, as he's able to again find Burroughs. Uh, nice job stepping up in the pocket. Broke down. Ford able to step up. Feels the pressure from the outside, steps up, gets a clear lane, pitch and catch, first down. They're going to have to get in a little bit more of a hurry up now. They're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage. They're going to have to get plays off. Yeah, they still have all three of their timeouts. The clock will start once they get these chains set. From midfield. Pressure from the blind side. Never saw it coming. Jermaine Williams will swallow him up. Now they are just pinning their ears back right now and just coming. Hey, we've seen the speed rush from the outside. It just just gets around. Cuts inside. It actually had a, a twist up front where the defensive end comes down and the tackle comes around the corner. And able to get to him and bring four down. Bulldogs with some injuries on the offensive line, including, again, one of their top guys, Robbie Stevenson. It forces some freshmen into action tonight. And just unable to keep the quarterback on his feet. Better protection this time for Ford. And was that? It was caught with one arm and a foot inbounds for Traquan DuBose. Boy, this is an outstanding catch right here. Right at the peak of his leap to go up. And then has the presence of mind to get that foot down. This is about a 60-yard pass all the way across. And short side, wide side of the field, left foot inbounds. Great catch. Only was able to get one arm free to bring it in. And DeBose, a phenomenal catch to keep this drive moving downfield. They want it all. Towards the end zone, one on two. And the Bulldogs may have been fortunate that that ball's not intercepted as their only representative was Quan Caldwell. That forced the issue a little bit, throwing into double coverage here. Steps in. Really does, didn't get to step into his throw. Ball hangs up a little bit. Allows the defenders to get to it. Then you become, as a receiver, you become the defensive back right. and make sure you swat the ball down. So second and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 33-yard line. And this is not an offense that's going to be thinking much about field goals when you do the math. And that ball just through the fingertips of an elevated DeBose could not haul that one in. Uh, couldn't step into it. Had pressure underneath him as a quarterback. They, 
always feel like you want to step into your throw, but you feel that pressure around your feet. That always means you shorten your stride. When you shorten your stride, the ball's going to be elevated. And missed high that time. It's going to bring up third and ten. Let me ask you, you have a kicker in Tyler Scandrett, six of seven this year. If you have to play fourth down coming up, do you try to make it a 15-point ball game, hope for two touchdowns and a two-point try? Well, I would, I would want to get it to a two-possession game if I can. This ball hauled in, caught looking for the pylon, and then the question is, when did the ball come out? They will say he crossed the goal line before the ball came loose. And the Bulldogs, for the first time tonight, at least for the moment, have points on the board. This is that. Trey Samuel with his second score of the season. Well, that's a perfectly thrown ball. Really puts a little air under it. It's an out and up from the inside on a wheel route. You got that wheel rock coming out. When that wheel comes out, and there he is, does he get over the line? Well, I tell you what, I don't know if that football ever crossed the line, but at this point, it's it's into the end zone. Now, all of a sudden, right back in the ball game. They may have lined up behind the wrong lineman there for the kick. Here is Scandrick. First time he'll have a chance to split the uprights. It's good. 18 to 7, an 11 point ball game, officially a touchdown for Samuel. If we had gone to a replay, of course, then the question is, is it a touchback to the end zone? Is it shy at the one? But with no replay, an 11 point ball game, and now you assume they'll kick it deep and trust their defense, which has been their strength tonight. No, no doubt. I think you do kick it deep. You got, to, you know, 12, over 12 minutes to go in the game. Wheel right out of the backfield for Samuel. He's lined up in the backfield. It's always a scenario where it really doesn't get accounted for so many times. Uh, does the back uh, when he gets up the field. Great pitch and catch for the touchdown. And now see if the defense, as you mentioned, can get that stop. Frankly, based on that angle, it looked like Samuel was likely short when he fumbled, but it also looked like the ball did not go through the end zone. When it, so at the very worst, it would have been first and goal from a couple of inches out. But as it stands, again, not all FCS conferences have instant replay. And the Aggies will see their lead cut down to 11. Yeah, but that gets the home crowd into it, the band yeah. into it. Just great opportunity. Now see if the defense can respond. And, and then uh, on the other side, it... it, it if you're North Carolina A and T, you know you've been tested all year. You, you you're undefeated at this point. This is when that offensive line's got to come out, push out, get some first downs on the ground. The first time for Scandrick to kick off since we opened the ball game. And nothing doing. Special teams will force the Aggies to start at their own 19-yard line. Simply. No return available for Capel. Well, I tell you, Willis right there, running back on the special teams. Was well, just outstanding. Makes a great play right there to bring him down. Special teams is about character and want to. <laughs> right there, he wanted to. Bulldogs would love a three and out. Not just to get the ball back, but likely in favorable field position. Obviously up against a very capable offense that scored a touchdown in its own right on its last drive for the Aggies. And to get it to Bell, but he he is such a good football player. Ooh. Gets, gets hurt again. He's already been out of the game once. Can he stay in there? This time it looks like a leg injury. They were such a different team last year without him. And he'll try to play through it. Last year, the Aggies, again, even with what Rod Broadway would consider some disappointing moments at the end of the season, they still finished 9-3, and 7-1 and one in the MEAC. Went on to the FCS playoffs. But again, that's disappointment for a guy who has won national titles at each of his stops. A corner blitz. You always, as a quarterback, you see that. Nice read right there to recognize it. You always throw to the blitzing side. Corner comes in. You come right back to that receiver. And you can see the corner 19 coming. 
come right back there to the slot man who's wide open. It was Garden able to make the grab to move the sticks. Again, Chris Garden, the senior out of Morganton, North Carolina. Out of the pistol. A little behind Trey Scott, but frankly, you keep the clock running. Yeah, and Trey Scott did a nice job, too, of, of, of coming back and making the catch. They were coming. Max Blitz that time. Nice job of recognizing that early. The number 10's around. You're going to get yeah. rid of the football. <laughs> yeah. running down here. Some kind of draw, some scenario, keep this clock running. So much for that. Throws it to wow. Bell, looking for that one-on-one -on -one matchup. But Alex Brown gets the better of the exchange for the Bulldogs. Well, that stops the clock, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. If you're South Carolina State, now you can pin your ears back here on third down and Try to get some pressure, maybe create a turnover. Part of the field they're in, you should get, if you can force a punt here, you should get good starting field position. That's if the Aggies can get the punt off. Remember the Bulldogs already with a block punt tonight. Bulldogs active up front. One on one, goes up for the ball. Bell able to squeeze it in. Bulldogs thought he may have gotten away with a little NFL push off. Oh, what a catch. But Elijah Bell. What body control from Bell. You're going to go to your best receiver. Goes up right at the top, comes down. See that sideline excited. That's just outstanding individual effort. Bell had no doubt that football belonged to him. Biggest play of the second half, no doubt. Into Bulldog territory. Yeah. Cartwright. Aggies looking to answer the touchdown scored by the Bulldogs on the last possession with one of their own. Nice job bouncing outside and number 10. Just got to have 18 tackles in the ball game. Ball's up to 43. Very methodical right now. Cartwright first down and then some. Cartwright down the sideline looking towards the end zone. It'll be about seven yards shy. Another big play for the highlight reel for Markel Cartwright. Uh, held him in check most of the second half here. This excellent blocking up front. Got an outstanding lead block in front of him by Simpson. William Simpson with a great block. Kicked out the linebacker. Got him into the secondary and he almost takes it to the house. He's your MEAC Offensive Player of the Week. Again, his teammate Mac McLean was both the Rookie of the Week and Defensive Player of the Week, as well as National Player of the Week in the FCS with those two pick sixes. Smith into the backfield now is the tailback. Cuts inside, and a little setup second and goal from the three. The Aggies this year in the red zone are 15 of 19 coming into today. All 15 of those were touchdowns. Uh, the offensive front has won the battle tonight. There's no question. Those five guys up front for the Aggies have won the line of scrimmage. Cartwright back in. That's William Simpson, the fullback, lined up next to the quarterback. 
He'll follow Simpson. And Cartwright will just be able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Uh, this this is a defense you play for pride right now. You don't want to get them in the end zone, but any chance to get back in the game, you got to force a field goal attempt. And this is this is when you work in August when it's hot, and you think this is for these kind of situations because you're tired. They've been on the field defensively an awful yeah. lot tonight. And if you're the Aggies, you think attempting that field goal would be a must on fourth down as all of a sudden two touchdowns from the Bulldogs instead of giving them a lead would simply likely tie this ball game up. At the moment, they're not thinking about uprights. They're thinking about the end zone. And this will be a direct snap to Capel. Capel out of their Wildcat. Speed. And will just pick up a yard, stays in bounds. More time will come off the clock, and here's some decision-making time. Well, I think you said it earlier. I think you got to take three points right here. What a nice job of stringing this out, feathering it to the sidelines. It gets to the outside, and just great pursuit, not allowing him to get the corner, and then a great open field tackle. And that's that's point-saving tackle right there. Capel had two rushing touchdowns coming into tonight. Took that snap out of the Wildcat. Got a flag, a late flag yep. here. Well, that decision got a little easier. It's against the Aggies. You know, if you had gone for it on fourth down and not made it, you figure, worst-case scenario, the Bulldogs are pinned back on their one. But you've got to be thinking about three points now. Well, let's see. With the penalty, though, you give them another down. Here, so it's, oh, it's, they did? Ex you're right. They accepted so the penalty. They accepted the penalty. Wow. And, and now they yep. so back out 10 yarders. Third and goal from the 13. Elijah Bell, number 13, right at the top of your screen. There could be some second guessing here. Protections there. Throw towards the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. And the Bulldogs appear to have made the right call, giving the Aggies another third down to play. And now that field goal try, significantly more of a challenge. It is, but you knew where he was going right here. He's going to their best receiver, Bell, a very good one. Bell trying to say he, he was hit. But boy, it looked like to me he pushed off yeah. a little bit. Alex Brown gave him a little dose of his own medicine. Yeah. Those two tonight have been going back and forth, and the officials have allowed it. Uh, this is a great job defensively, though. Ruiz tonight is 2-for-2 two two on field goals. 0-for-1 on extra points. This from 30. And two flags come in. The kick itself was no good. And it looks like he'll get another try five yards closer. Unless there's a personal foul variety. Let's see what the actual call is. Yes. First down. He wow. that, that emphasis leaping for the protection of the lineman, especially the snapper on kicks. And this year, the real emphasis, even if you don't truly use for leverage the offensive lineman, but make contact with them, that's an automatic first down. And the wow. Aggies change the complexion of this game again. Can take more time off the clock. You just leap forward. It doesn't mean you can't jump. But you can't come down on top of one of your teammates. you got to be away from the line of scrimmage. And this is back to live action. First down. And they're going to get to about the three-yard line. It'll be second and goal from three yards out. But watch that clock melt away. And they'll take the full 40 seconds on every snap here. Oh, I tell you what. Football is, a, is an if and what game. But if... If you're a Bulldog fan right now, you got to be thinking, well, you know, we had our opportunities, no doubt, to take down a really good football team in North Carolina A&T. Well, they watched their Bulldogs match up against NC and North Carolina Central last week and have a lead late, only to watch it slip away on some miscues. A comeback effort, perhaps, 
will elude them here tonight. And Cartwright, although he doesn't gain anything, takes more time off that clock. The Bulldogs do have all three of their timeouts. At the moment, trailed by 11. Third and goal coming up, and then perhaps another try on the field goal. Well, how about this defensive front? Just coming up, doing everything they can do, uh, keep their team in the game. You're not going to use a timeout here. You're going to have to save those for the offensive side. Watch for number 13 again in the th passing game here. Mr. Bell. There yeah, was there was movement. There was movement on the left guard, and they do catch it. Well, let's see if the Aggies take one stab at throwing it into the end zone, or if they just want to take as much time off the clock as possible and settle for a field goal, which they missed prior to that personal foul. We'll remind you. Well, I think they're going to put it in the air and try some kind of double combination on the outside. Get something going, and also Trey Scott comes back into the game. He's a big target as a tight end. Hopefully, maybe slipping him into the end zone. You see him lined up as an H back right now. They'll air it out into the end zone. Incomplete fourth down as looking for Trey Scott. Again, the transfer from Tulane. Still without a touchdown this year. How about this defense making the step up again? They try to get Scott from the H back on a wheel route. Safety stays home. Almost came up with the pick right there. It'll lead to a field, another field goal attempt. I don't think there'll be any leaping this time. Ruiz is still officially two for two tonight on field goals. Last one was from about two yards farther back than this one. Ruiz two for four on the season. From 28, it's good. So 21 to seven, Bulldogs are still within two touchdowns. Yeah, they're still in the ball game. Their defense. I tell you what, uh, at the end of the night, uh, you'll look at this scenario. Their defense stood up all night long, and their offense just didn't get anything going quick enough. Now, it'll be in the passing game here. you got three timeouts. Got to try to score quickly, and then probably onside kick at this point to try to get back in the game. But I can't say enough about the South Carolina State Bulldog defense. They kept their nose in this game the entire ball game. They have not allowed the Aggies to put this one away. Yep. And we'll see if that comes back to bite North Carolina A&T if things start to click here in the final four minutes for South Carolina State. We've seen very few kickoffs in this direction that we're going to see here. Left to right on your screen. Everything's been right to left. Most of the scoring's been in the other end zone. Again, our spotlight tonight here on MEAC football. Two of the top three teams in the preseason poll for the conference. Bulldogs picked to finish third. Aggies probably feel slighted picked to finish second. But they're going to have themselves in some real trouble right now. They can't come back here. They're going to fall to 0-2 in conference play. Now, talking about South Carolina State. They lead the series all time against these Aggies 12-3, but again... Since the arrival of Coach Broadway, North Carolina A&T has started to turn that around. I think all three of those wins have come in the last five years now. Great kick coverage right there. That's a nice job of coming down the field. Got him back into the middle of the field. All right. Now you got to come out. you got to have a sense of real urgency offensively. Good tackle. Meet in the middle is what you call that. That's a sandwich. Joshua Patrick, one of the two men, sandwiching Burson on that return. Well, we saw this Bulldogs offense make one quarterback change, only then to revert back. Dewan Ford at quarterback. Needs two scoring draws. You, you try for a touchdown and an onside kick and then hope for another score. Ford lets it loose. Downfield. Man on man, and that time, no highlight real catch for DeBose. He tried to get up, and ball hung up just a little bit. 
And that's the other thing is you've you got to think about taking some shots down the field, but also you have time. The clock does stop on the timeout. So some of those nice crossing patterns. Nice defense there coming back and knocking that football away. Yeah, it's Demondre Abram, the cornerback out of Lakeland, Florida. Able to keep, maintain his coverage. Ford never got to see the play finish. This time to the right sideline and never a chance. That one goes out of play. He was looking in the direction of Trey Samuel. That little double move from the outside. Samuel again, the wheel route. It scored earlier in the game. This time they run it to the middle. He was out and up. Good coverage on the outside. It, boy, just didn't have time really to let the play develop. Ford has been popped on each of his last yes, two he throws. Has. It'll be third and ten now. And you imagine this is four down territory. It is hauled in by DeBose. That is up at the 35 is where they'll mark it. Should have been a first down. Let's see what the mark is. Going to be about a yard short. Where he comes down, he's, he's to yeah. the mark, but his momentum and the tackle took him behind it, and it's going to make it fourth and one. Got to go for it here. All three of your timeouts. Now they'll wind the clock and subsequently Aggies will use their final timeout. They want to make sure that this ball gets turned over on downs and that they can try to run out that clock. Well, I think you're going to try the speed option has been one of the best plays offensively on the night for the Bulldogs. So I, that, I believe that's where they'll go trying to get forward on the corner because it'll stop the clock if they can get the first down. So I think they're going to run the football, and that would be the play that I would think that they would go to in this scenario and then try to get back to the line of scrimmage. If I was in the huddle right now, you can see the conference standings right there. A&T 4-0 coming in, 1-0 in conference play. They put themselves in great position if they can hold on here. So easily that could have been North Carolina Central in the middle of the pack at 1-1 one and one, and instead South Carolina stayed at 1-0 last week. But again, the Bulldogs saw things slip away. Aggies are going to do their part to make sure this one does not slip away on the road in Orangeburg. And I think speed option would be the play for me to get on the corner. Fourth so. and one. A young line in front of Ford. And, well, the initial surge was not going to allow for the first down, but they do get it on the second effort. An excellent job maintaining his balance by Jarius Jenkins. Oh, Jenkins, he, he was hit in the backfield. Breaks that first tackle and keeps those legs churning. Then he's across the line of the game. Makes it by a yard. And the Bulldogs keep marching. Back to the air. It'll be underthrown. Is that ball intercepted or did it hit the grass? We'll get the indication. They're going to say that ball's picked off. This came up short. What a nice play reacting to the football. Interception by the Aggies. It's Jeremy Taylor coming up with the pick. All right, nice play. Did a nice job right there. Got down, showed great hands. Cradled it in, and that should do it. And it did appear Taylor, in fact, got his arm underneath that football. Go back and look at this film tomorrow, both of these teams. If you're a Bulldog fan or a Bulldog, you're going to say, well, we had great opportunity, just didn't get it done. We had, we had our chances. We just couldn't get anything going offensively on the other side. A&T's defense has been real impressive. Under center for this snap. Cartwright's only job, simply hold on to that football. Bulldogs have all three timeouts. Will they use them? Clock continues to move right now. Another big night for number 22, too. He's, Cartwright's had another outstanding night. Toting the rock. Oh, 
Aggies looking as though they'll improve to 5 and 0 oh, as the Bulldogs not stopping the clock. Up next would be A&T back at home against Delaware State continuing MEAC competition. And again for Cartwright it's a positive play just keep that clock running. Now the Bulldogs do use their first timeout to stop the clock. Bulldogs after tonight will have Morgan State right back here in Orangeburg. Uh, you, you look at the scenario of, of trying to go out and, and improve week in and week out. When, when you're winning, Lincoln, as the Aggies are doing right now, they're finding a way to get games. You're getting great workouts. You're getting those those things you need to do as a coach, and you're building for that name. You're building that excitement. On the other side now, when you're a team like South Carolina State, who's was predicted to be third in the conference, one of the better teams in this conference, and they're going to fall at this point, looks like, to one and three at this point, no and two in conference play. You really have to look to your leaders to get them up, to get to practice, do the things they need to do uh, to continue. The season's not over by any means. I asked Rod Broadway, biggest questions coming into this year, and he said, look, we had turnover at both kicker and punter positions. Offensive line play might be in doubt early on. Well, the offensive line has started to gel with the success of the running game. Obviously, still some work to be done. There was a blocked punt tonight as they'll run the Wildcat for the second time this evening. And you also had some struggles in the kicking game as well. But that's what you like. Look, there's still room to improve, but you got a W on the Saturday. Yeah, you did. And that would... Just going to run it. Second time out taken by the Bulldogs. Stop the clock. Going to have to punt it away here on fourth down. And I know we're talking as though this one's over. There is still a chance if the Bulldogs can get something going on offense, their defense has been up to the task of getting stops. Well, you're going to have to have another block now. They're going to have to block this punt. And I'm sure that's that's why this during this timeout, that punt team's out there talking with this coach and staff saying, hey, whatever it takes, we cannot get this punt blocked. You are looking at a legend in the area in Oliver Buddy Pugh. Again, a 1975 graduate of South Carolina State. A decade and a half. Six MEAC titles under his watch. You know, he was on... Lou Holtz's staff over with the Gamecocks when Steve Spurrier had a talented defensive line coach over at Florida by the name of Rod Broadway. Yeah. Broadway had come from Duke with Spurrier to Florida. That was the first time these two coaches start to match up against one another. And, of course, for the past several years as head coaches here in the MEAC. Here they come. Pressure. Can't get a piece of it this time. Oh, and the Bulldogs, if they are going to make a comeback down two scores, will need at least a 98-yard drive just to pull within seven. Well, you come after it. Most of the time, the kicker's not worried about getting the spiral. He's worried about getting it off. It usually never gets to your return guy. And then once it hits the turf... Yeah, any, anything can go. Yeah, anything can happen. It is oblong. It's not round. <laughs> You can understand why if you don't feel that ball on the fly, you're getting away from it, especially this late in a ball game. But in that situation, it cost the Bulldogs. You may have seen the Aggies tap that ball down to the one, but uh, officials do, in fact, properly mark it at the two at the point of contact. So Ford is your quarterback looking for a 98-yard drive to cut this deficit in half. One timeout to work with. Empty. And you almost have to go towards the sideline after making that catch. A minute 22 and counting down. Uh, nice job. He's rushing three. Dropping eight back in coverage. Prevent defense behind it. you got two deep safeties playing halves behind it. It'll be a first down. They'll stop the clock briefly at the 32-yard line. Well, that's those two safeties. If you're going to split this defense in this type of prevented defense, that's where you got to go. Because the two safeties are going to go to the halves. you got to get in the center 
of the field, get the pitch and catch for the first down. Caldwell with the catch, clock back in motion as the sticks are set. Got to have a little more sense of urgency right now. Yeah, now they're simply playing to make the score look a little prettier in the box score. Uh, it's hard to imagine multiple drives. Uh, Burroughs did, didn't secure that football. Well, fr frankly, it wasn't going to accomplish much. It, it, he had to get out of bounds. Got to go, got to go downfield. And I know you may not feel like you have enough protection to buy you time for your receivers to run those routes. Let's see how much pressure the Aggies bring. Yeah, they're they're going to rush three and drop eight in coverage. Ford has time. Checks it down to midfield. Receiver DeBose. It'll stop the clock briefly. They do have one timeout. Probably down to their final couple of plays here in this ball game. Needing two scores. Just spikes it. So you still have a timeout. Still likely can run a couple of plays. You have to traverse 50 yards. There's no settling for field goal tries. Down by 14. Yeah, I think you've got to get this this play into the end zone right now. Well, for the Bulldog fans, a reminder that we will be back in Orangeburg on October 28th for their matchup against Howard and the next week against Hampton. See how the Bulldogs progress during that time in conference play. And this play will, again, stop the clock briefly, but now your timeout's almost irrelevant. Really just one play left here in this ballgame tonight before the Aggies improve officially to 5-0 and for the first time since 1993. And that's just so they can draw up a play. This next throw has to go in the end zone. Right, but it also he had an illegal formation, didn't have, had too many men in the backfield. Not enough on the line of scrimmage. Flag came from the top of your screen. And that may run off the clock if they don't use their timeout. Long discussion here. Yeah, they have to use the timeout. Otherwise, there's a clock runoff that goes with that penalty on offense. So it'll cost him five yards, and it'll be the problem, more than likely the last play of the ball game coming. Bulldogs are going to fall to one and three, an zero and two start in conference. With that said, they have gotten a a tough draw at the start of the Miac slate against North Carolina Central, and this week against North Carolina A and T. Up the middle, final play of the night. And making the final tackle is Deion Jones to end this ball game. As Coach Rod Broadway and the North Carolina A&T Aggies are 5-0. and oh, In all likelihood, moving up the top 25 rankings once again when the new poll comes out next week. But to go on the road against a really good quality opponent in South Carolina State to you got to give the Aggies a lot of credit. And there's two things that jump off the page for me is they are really good defensive in the defensive front. Uh, they're going to be effective against a lot of clubs. And then how about the balance they have on the offensive side of the ball? They can run it and throw it very effectively. Elijah Bell, one of the best receivers in the country. So many talented receivers. A great quarterback to have that problem of choosing whom to throw to. And, of course, uh, some running backs that can hold their own for the Aggies as well. With that said, there's no shortage of discussion about how great this Bulldogs defense truly can be by the end of the year. It can be a championship quality defense. The offense just needs to help them out putting points on the board. Yeah, they, they just really struggled tonight going up. It's a really good defense. They never got any continuity on the offensive side. And because of that, they played from behind all night long. Just couldn't get much going on the offensive side. So our final from Orangeburg, South Carolina. Another MEAC game in the books. The Aggies pick up the victory. 
Improving now 5-0 and oh on the year. Your final score 21-7, to seven, North Carolina A&T victorious on the road. For Keith Moreland, I'm Lincoln Rose. A big thank you to our entire Flow Football production crew. Thrilled to have you with us on this Saturday evening. Look forward to the MEAC championship hunt as we move into October. Came up short. What a nice play, reacting to the football. It's Jeremy Taylor coming up with the pick. Right, nice play. Did a nice job right there. Got down, showed great hands. Cradled it in, and that should do it. And it did appear Taylor, in fact, got his arm underneath that football. 